Baking. No matter how great in the kitchen you may be with meals, creating the perfect pastry, cake, or muffin is a different monster altogether. But for Shai Sumter, owner of Butter Queen Bakery, it's a skill she's mastered since the age of 10. My name is Rocky McCoy, and I'm here to find out your why. What's your excuse? While her mother worked, Shai was under the warmful guise of her grandmother. There she earned the Butter Queen Bakery name due to her peculiar taste in the kitchen. So I got the name from my grandmother. That's what she used to call me when I was younger because I would like literally eat sticks of butter like from the pack, from the fridge <laughs> as a toddler. And so my mom and grandmother started calling me Butter Queen because I just love butter. I put butter on everything, toast. Like if it's margarine or oil, I don't want it because it's not going to have the, the right taste. Um, so that's where the name came from. Butter Queen Bakery may have jokingly began from a little girl's love for butter, but the aha moment didn't come until her fellow bike riders from Streets Calling started paying for her free cakes. Then the pandemic hit, and while others panicked, she got serious. Being in the pandemic, you're, all you're left with is literally your thoughts. So I was doing a lot of reflection, a lot of reading the Bible, and just thinking about like what my purpose is here and how I saw my life years down the line and it wasn't working for someone doing a job that I can just tolerate. That's why I just love food and, and baking. At the end of all of that, you're bringing people together. It's always some type of function. People are always happy. You can't eat a piece of cake and wanting to be angry or at someone or just feeling sad. At least for that moment, you're happy because what you're eating tastes good. But let's set the record straight. She has a master's degree in accounting that's still being put to use. She's a project manager and scrum master. That's right, Shy is part of a long line of entrepreneurs balancing a business and a nine to five. My full time is way more hands on. I'm leading like 15 meetings a week on top of doing all this baking. But on a typical week, like I try to wake up like six or seven, um, get a quick workout in, let the dog out, feed him. And if it's a Monday, I'm preparing for my orders on Wednesday. So I'll wake up, take out all my ingredients, let them get to room temperature so I can start baking with those probably a couple hours later. Um, by then I've logged into work by like 8.39 and then I've had like my first set of morning meetings. During lunch, I start baking maybe three hours, give or take, going back to, to work and doing uh, having meetings in between that as well. Once all the cakes are baked, I let those all cool off and usually by that night or the next morning, I go back and decorate all the cakes. After I decorate them, then I go back and do all the labeling and packaging. My baking process is over two days, so I just make sure that I'm efficient as possible because if I don't do that, I'm up baking till two, three in the morning and then I'm waking up the next morning for work. And after about three months of trial and error, she finally got it right. It's just me doing everything, recipe creation, labeling, packaging, baking, selling, all that. Did I say marketing? That too. I think I changed my mindset around like looking at other people like, oh, they look so established and I just feel so like meek and small and this is my little thing. And it's always going to be hard the first couple of times. You're always going to feel like you don't know enough or you're inadequate. After I got through the process of baking in between meetings and like doing everything that I have to do on my plate and figuring out, okay, what works best? Maybe I shouldn't bake Wednesday mornings because I'm selling it on Wednesday evening. Maybe I should go and move this ahead of time. So once I figured out those little nuances to make my schedule work, that's when I was like, all right, I can do this. Like, this isn't that hard. And while she admits the bakery will force her to go all in, there are some fears that she still has to get over. It's who I would sell to. Putting myself where I'm able to, to sell commercially um, that's like a long-term goal of mine. And I guess it's not so long-term in, in the, or in action, cause it's not that hard to do it, but I'm afraid to do that. Cause what if I, I'm not able to make the capacity that's needed or what if my quality 
uh, starts to slip because I'm doing so much and how am I going to hire the help that I need and act to actually get good people who care about the business and care about the taste of the cakes as much as I do. I always feel like, oh, I need to get this one thing right before I reach out. So I have to put my foot down at one point and say, all right, it's as good as it's going to be at this moment in time. Reach out and you can always adjust. And like any creator, reinvention is a must. Over 50% of my cake flavors can be made vegan. Um, and so I want to do the same thing with gluten-free. Being from the South, you don't do gluten-free, vegan, nothing. They're like <laughs> eggs and milk and regular flour. That's what we're working with. Shy has thought on several occasions about partnering with various caterers and small shops. But through some of those negotiations, she's had to learn the power of saying no and doubling down on her worth. So I did have a carry out spot that wanted to offer them, but the price point wasn't where it needed to be. Um, so I wasn't able to move forward with that opportunity. I think that for me, that's where the power of no was. Um, and the amount of time that I would have put in that, I don't think that would have pushed my business forward in the direction it, I wanted it to go. So that opened me up to other opportunities. My price points were a lot lower before. Um, and once I got confident in what I was doing and making sure that each cake that I'm turning out, it has the same level of high quality, great taste, they're moist. Once I got to that point, I was like, I'm not going to sell my stuff really, really cheap or the price of a, a Walmart cake because my ingredients aren't Walmart. No matter what you say, if your only bad thing about my cake is that it costs too much, you're not saying anything about the taste. You're not saying anything about how it looks. You're not saying, oh, I got a cake last week and it was dry and this week is moist and next week is dry again. If you're not saying any of those things, I'm standing on my cakes then because I know that they're good. And if they're good, you're gonna be willing to pay for something that's consistently good. I don't look at it as rejection. Uh, and I mean, that's, that's the truth. Uh, I feel like if you haven't tried it, then that's not rejection. Because if you try and be like, oh, that's nasty, that's rejection, which I've never had that. But I don't look at it as rejection. I just look at it as you haven't given me an opportunity to wow you yet. So what's the end game? The end goal for the bakery would be to have my cakes in stores or in, I'm, I'll call them, eateries to encompass like a carry out restaurant um, to have those sold in those types of spaces um, and spaces that may not have desserts or have the capacity to make um, fresh baked desserts because I know some restaurants they just go to Restaurant Depot slap some sauce on it and call it homemade um, but if they want to get to a space where they are doing fresh baked desserts, then that's, that's where I will be. And as always, we close with my two favorite questions. What advice would you give your younger self? Listen to the voice inside of you. Don't always look out to other people to tell you the direction to go in. Like, yes, take advice and take the lessons learned from other people, but validate yourself. Like, you're doing things right. Just because it's different, that doesn't mean it's wrong. And what advice would your younger self give you now? Stop being so serious. Have fun. Yeah, just as simple as that. Just being in the moment and enjoying that. So next time you find yourself wandering around Foggy Bottom or Bowie Town Center, stop by Buttercream Bakery. Your sweet tooth will thank you. What's up, everybody? My name is Shai Sumter. Buttercream Bakery is my excuse. What's yours? <laughs>